Delays, denials, and a looming deficit are all part of the troubled health care program set up to help 9-11 survivors. Now, these folks live with a variety of illnesses, including cancer and PTSD. But the multi-billion dollar program paid for with your tax dollars continues to fall short. Aid on your side, investigator Walt Buteau joining us now to explain what's happening. And Keith and Stacy, it may be hard to believe, but timely access was not even part of this organization's strategy until the government told them it should be. And patients will tell you long waits and delays have been part of the decade-old system. For most of us, 9-11 ceremonies come once a year as a time to remember the lives lost and the survivors. We're almost 21 years, they still haven't given me a yes or a no. Retired New York City firefighter Garrett Lindgren is among the thousands who cope with the impact of the attacks every day. Lindgren, who lives in Bradenton, is treated for several ailments through the World Trade Center Health Program. But he and others are still fighting for help with uncovered conditions, including the nerve scarring disease, toxic neuropathy. It's getting significantly worse. It affects the way I walk. It's affecting my balance. It causes a lot of pain. It wakes me up in the middle of the night. We sat down one-on-one -on -one with the Government Accountability Office to talk about its new investigation into health care program complaints. We found out the recommendations are focused on improving and monitoring how long patients wait. Delays in timely care can affect folks' conditions. They can become sicker, um, ultimately, unfortunately, um, pass away. So that's why we think our recommendations are so important. According to the report, the cost of the program has nearly doubled in a matter of six years. Another report indicates it will run a multi-billion dollar deficit in about two years. The GAO will be watching. We will keep on top of it to see um, what steps they take and if they appropriately implement the recommendations. Lindgren tells me delays are especially difficult for survivors who are sick. And he says conditions like PTSD make that even harder. Maybe that's the reason they're trying to log in, is to maybe start getting help for PTSD. Almost impossible then. It's very hard for a person in that situation to deal with this kind of frustration. Because of that frustration, a new manager took over the program this year, and we've tried several times, but that company has not responded to our request for comment, at least not yet. Yeah, and you've been going after the, for at least a week right. or more, two or three yep. times, so if you're watching, pass it on, right? Yeah. Right. And do you have any idea why that cost has nearly doubled in just a matter of years? You know, part of it, obviously, is inflation. One factor is more patients are coming forward since some of the illnesses take time to develop. And while there are about 110,000 in the program, including almost 4,000 from Florida, there may be as many as 400,000 who are eligible but not yet in the program. So if they're running some red ink now, think about what might happen as more people join the program. Oh, goodness, yeah. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Walt. If you okay. have something you'd like Walt to investigate, you can give him a call at the 8 on your side helpline, the telephone number 1-800-338-0808.